The GT2 room, that's cool. Oh yeah, we got a GT1 room as well. Wow. All right, so we'll head kind of over this corner here a little bit. Now, some other interesting stuff about this building itself. Um, this building has actually been a site of many different uh, films and, and uh, TV shows and stuff like that. Are you familiar with the Avengers series, I'm sure? Sure. This is actually the Avengers headquarters. So it's kind of cool that I get to come work oh. in the Avengers headquarters every day. So where they took the, where that big A was, yeah. is actually right where our Porsche Crest is. And then they CGI'd a lake over the top of our uh, drive facility. So ah. yeah, this is where the spaceship actually landed. Their, their uh, airplane there landed right over there. So it was pretty cool. And was, the, the, was the actual A put there? Or was that digital? That honestly, I don't know. I was not here. I wasn't here for the filming. I would digital? imagine it was probably CGI'd, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah, there you go. Wow. Perfect. So we'll talk uh, just a little bit about our facility. It's a pretty unique drive facility within the industry. Uh, we got a lot of really cool things we get to do. Uh, so in particular, the kick plate. There's only two of those in North America, and Porsche owns both of them. So uh, if you want to go driving a kick plate, you got to come to us. Pretty neat system. So that car is going to drive down. It's going to get kicked by that plate and go into a slide. So the job is to use quick hands, good vision, get the car straightened back out, and then we get another couple obstacles to try to avoid there. But that surface is a polished epoxy. So it, with the sprinklers, it feels kind of like ice. So it is a lot of fun. Uh, do a lot of a lot of fun spins there. 360s, 180s what, are fun too. What makes it like what's moving? So if you look right at the end of the two white lines, see there's that rectangle. It's like a little bit different kind of shade there. That is a steel plate that actually slides left and right. It's like having the rug pulled out from under your feet. But it's right when the back tires hit it, it shifts about two feet underneath the back tire. So as the car goes onto the red surface, it's put into a spin. And does it go based on the front, the weight of the front tire, and then waiting like a? So there's there's a couple of sensors on the way into the plate, so it knows about the timing, it knows the speed of the car. So the, the system is actually based on the speed of the car. The faster you go, the harder it kicks, the harder it is to catch. So it's a pretty neat system. Wow. And you see, slow hands, don't catch it. That's incredible. It's pretty cool. Wow. So we get to do a lot of fun stuff with different comparison programs, like the 718 versus the 911. You can really see the weight balance and exactly how the car rotates differently, repeatedly over and over and over, and really, really practice practice skills, practice reaction speed, stuff like that. And those yellow things that pop up? Those are kind of a fence to, to add in an obstacle, right? The scenario that, we're, that they're, they've created is kind of like you're hitting a patch of black ice on an alpine road, right? If you hit that patch of ice, you probably, you know, you got to catch the car and get yourself back under control. The fences are simulating an object in the road or another car that maybe has already hit that ice and they've spun around. So not only do you have to fix your own problem, once you're back under control, you have to then avoid that next obstacle, Makes whatever sense. it may be, but keeping the car under control, even in the same conditions. So it's pretty cool. My understanding is it was built for the Austrian government uh, for their driver test programs. Really? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's only a handful of them in the world. I believe there's about eight in the world. Uh, Porsche owns most of those. There's a couple that we don't own across the globe, but most of them are ours. So it's a pretty neat system. So then we've got a couple other modules, our low friction circle back there, commonly referred to as a skid pad. I'm sure you've seen a skid pad before at many sure. different uh, motorsports facilities. Lime Rock does one. Oh, there you go. It's a lot of fun out there. Those two places we can turn down or off the PSM, Porsche Stability Management. So we'll be able to see if we can manage the car without the help from those systems, which driving a 964, you know what that's like. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see how much those systems are doing for us now, how the technology has evolved, really what kind of fun we can have without the help of those nannies in the back. So then uh, we've got a couple other neat things. One thing a lot of people don't realize about Porsche, if you look off to the right there in the back corner, you see a Cayenne out on our off-road course. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty extreme off-road course. I've, I've been told by many guests that it's more extreme than some other dedicated off-road courses out there across the, uh, across the country. Really? Um, it is absolutely amazing what a Cayenne will do. Most people don't realize it when you see a Cayenne in the mall parking lot, in its natural habitat, that it will go up a 74% grade hill. But it drives right up and down, no problem. He was telling, yeah, he said like I think it's seventy or seventy four. Yeah, so that's crazy. So the, the, up seventy down. Right? Yep, seventy seventy up, seventy four down. Actually, yeah. So the the one on the left side, that road, that left side, the face of it is seventy percent grade. The back side, as you go down, is seventy four. Wow. And it's pretty cool because you can go down the other side without touching the pedals. Use Porsche Hill Control, and the car keeps itself at two miles an hour all the way down the hill. Wow. It's really, really amazing. Yeah. So if you look off to our right as well, you see a little bit of construction going on over here. So out here, we're actually doing an expansion. We're building a second, basically a second facility. So we're doing a whole nother circuit, a whole nother set of modules. We're going to do an ice hill as well. So similar surface to what's on the kick plate, but it'll be going up a, up a hill and around a turn. So that'll be quite interesting. Uh, we'll see. You know, we've written so many letters about the noise. I just don't seem to care. I don't you know. know. I guess. Something about they were here first. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that facility hopefully is going to open uh, Q1 of 2023. We'll, we'll oh, see. Nice. I'm sure you know that every large construction project has always gone exactly on time. Sure, sure. So we'll see how that goes, but we're hopeful. Uh, but it looks like a fun circuit. It's not going to be an identical copy. It's going to be a very different circuit to what we have. So a little bit higher speeds, a little bit more straightaway, stuff like that. Uh, but it'll be an awful lot of fun, I think. Scooting along pretty well. All right. Well, if we want to continue on, we can go ahead and head on inside. We'll go see a few other things about the building. Yes, please. Now, you've never been here to Porsche Car North America headquarters, I have correct? not. Awesome. I'll we'll show you what a, a few things that are housed in the building. 
Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. you guys. All right. So we'll cruise right on back up our hallway here. One more chance for that coffee if you want it. I think I'm all right. You? Look at that thing. All right, so a couple of the neat things to see here. So over here to our left, if you see these, these lighted bays over here, those are, that is our Porsche Classic Factory Restoration Center. We'll be able to get a little closer look as we go down, but uh, from there, you can see a couple of the neat cars that are in there. Porsche, car, uh, Porsche Classic will take any car that is more than 10 years out of production, and they'll restore it back to factory brand new, or as close as you want to get to it. So pretty amazing work that they do in there. Uh, I've seen a lot of pretty cool cars come through there. Um, the only two places that I understand are you can go completely through the process with Porsche Classic is here and Stuttgart. So we get a lot of neat, uh, neat, neat cars through there. It's the only place I've ever seen. So these career. are privately owned cars. Those are the privately guy comes owned in cars. Like, hey, I want to go from nut to bolt. I found this in a barn, or hey, I've been driving this for ten years. It's a little rough. Just needs a few things. Any, any range in between. How far do you want to go with it? I want it to look like it came off the showroom floor yesterday. Can do. Really? Yep. Well, what's the waiting? Period for that. Uh, depends on the car. Depends on how much it needs. There's that's uh, it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis, sure. right? So yeah, they, they'd have to you go in, interview, do through, go through a process, talk about what you want, then they kind of set up how you're scheduled, how your you know payments and all that. So wow, how so, many cars can you do at any one time? Um, they have quite a few projects. Some stuff will get sent out for paint, so then they can fit another couple things on the list, stuff like that. I honestly don't know the answer to that question as far as how many they they max out their capacity at. Um, but most most I've ever seen. Probably about 10 or 12 at a time, give or take, just some, depending on the stage of the projects. Is it the far one as well? The very, very far end is actually our uh, mechanics, our mechanical team for our NVDs and for our fleet cars. So there's actually two oh, more bays down there that they, they maintain our cars as well as uh, prep all the NVDs like your car. Got it. And down here with all this? So to the right, if you look actually at these, this bay here with that car under the cover, yeah. might be your car. Might be my car. <laughs> now over here on the other side of the hall, we've got our model wall. So these are models that have been collected uh, by the staff here at uh, PCNA, and they are everything below the year line is all the race cars, and everything above the year line is all the street cars. Oh, you know what? So we've got just about every single model, but I not quite. Piece that together. <laughs> that makes sense now. Yeah, so there's a, there's a handful that are still, are still hunting for, but uh, we got just really? about everything. Yep. One, one very close and near and dear to my heart is the 944 is missing. That's what I actually started racing in. Interesting. Yeah, so am I. There's this 968. I'm convinced the 968 is going to start coming back like crazy. I, it, it might. So with the prices of everything that is turbocharged going up, the 968 might fill that, that gap and, and suddenly gain popularity. So were these made by Porsche or are these just like... You know, the, the models themselves? Yeah. I don't believe so. No, they're not, they're not made like here. Random company. Yeah, some, it's a model company that makes them, yeah. This is cool. How many people have walked they're in here and said they want to buy this? Oh yeah, oh, like yeah. every person. We, we direct them over to the retail store. We have some models. <laughs> Go ahead, Ruby, sorry. The recent ones, I believe, were commissioned, the majority of them by Porsche. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see these? So if you go to the museum, you'll see it. Yeah, the you detail see these wheels them. right there? I forget what those are called. I love the, you know, like little fins. Mm -hmm. What are the, do you know what those are called? I, I don't remember the name. There is a name for it. Um, uh, I think Audi you, ran a similar wheel yes, on some of their, exactly. uh, the, like the Audi 90 and stuff like that. That, I'd love to get that on a street car. Oh yeah, that'd be very cool. There's the pink pig, my, my, my favorite on the wall. 16 cylinder car. Yeah, he has this one. Actually, this one normally is a 16 cylinder car. That's, that's the bomb right there. <laughs> yeah, these are, this would be an awesome wall to recreate. Right. The original. Awesome. Yep. So over here, we've got our retail store, and we'll be going through there as well uh, a little bit later on in our tour. What's all this out here? So we're set up for an event. So we do uh, quite a lot of uh, different types of events, uh, everything from seminars or dinners to uh, we've had a wedding here. I mean, you, you name it, they will do wow. what, any kind of event you want to do. Now, you'll notice here there's kind of a dividing line going through the building, right? So I call this the boredom line, right? All the fun stuff happens on this half of the building. Yeah. Kind of the boring stuff happens on this side. So right. This is all the executive offices. Uh, Porsche Digital has an uh, office here. Porsche Finance, some folks from Audi and Volkswagen Finance. Uh, MHP, Porsche Consulting is here as well. So like I said, before the, uh, before the pandemic, we had almost 800 people in this building. So really? it's been a little bit of a ghost town here lately. Remember those pa paintings I was telling you about? In, uh, like that. In his in his LA building, those are like Huntsinger, Huntsingers, something that he makes like shoes or something. So you have that in LA. Yeah. 
So a couple of the neat little Easter eggs, got a few different little art objects and stuff like that. So as you look up here, hanging from the ceiling, you'll see some sort of an object. It's kind of hard to tell what it is, but it's actually a three-dimensional sculpture. So as you walk underneath, come stand right at the bottom left corner of this plaque. So right about here and look straight up at it. And just kind of, if you get the angle just right, you'll see it kind of come into a, a focus of a picture. Oh yeah. You see it? It's kind of cool, isn't it? It is cool. Yeah, you got to get lined up just right. Yeah, when you look at there. it from the side, yeah, no clue what it actually is. Yeah, you know? it doesn't. Stand, stand here and take a look at this. More to your left, more to your left, more to your left. See it? You got it. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. Pretty neat stuff. Now over here we've got our what we call our touch wall. A few, few neat cars over here. And any of these pictures you can tap on. It'll give you a little blurb about the car, pop up a little bit bigger picture. And you can see a little bit of a little, little info blurb about each different car. It's kind of neat. A lot of cool cars in there. Oh, there you go. Here's your. Uh... Well, that's actually a Carrera GT. That's 924 Carrera GT, which is basically what formalized the 944, because that's all the all the body lines, the fenders, and stuff that they used for that were what eventually became the 944. I guess I need to be more specific now when I say I want a Carrera GT. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's cool. What is this? That's a 968. There you go. I think that thing is cool. Oh, I love the 968. Yeah. Top speed. Oh, this is neat. Yeah, when I was, when I was managing my race shop, I had a, a client that we built a, a 968 race car for, and that thing was just fun to drive. Really? It wasn't terribly fast, but it was really, really fun to drive. The GT1? Yeah. Oops. Sometimes you might just drag it a little bit. It helps kind of reset its, its thoughts. GT1. We actually had one of those here at, uh, at one point. Oh, like the restoration thing? Gallery. Uh, that was actually it was just, it was just a car that was already finished. I'm not sure if it got restored here or if it was uh, back in Germany, but we had one of those on display. Um, very rare car, very rare. This is awesome. Here's me. There you go. I've always wanted to try to recreate that picture from the Nurburgring. This one? It was racing with all four wheels off the ground. I think that'd be amazing. We've gotten close. Um, Atlanta Motor Speedway has, when you do their, their infield, uh, the road course on the infield, it almost, almost has a similar outline to De uh, Daytona, yeah. but they're, where their center straightaway is, there's a nice little ridge right in the middle of it, and if you hit it a little closer to the left-hand side than the right, you do hear some tires chirp as you go yeah. over. It's, it can get pretty exciting. Guys do that at Lime Rock on the uphill. Yeah. And uh -huh. and oh, yeah. Better have that steering wheel straight. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Exclusive manufacture studio. Yep, so we have here our exclusive design options and things so you can come and see and feel and uh, see all the different roof fabrics, the interior leathers, all that kind of stuff. See how that color actually looks in real light as opposed to what it shows on your computer monitor, which might be different than your friend's computer monitor, you know? This is the leather slats, in, I mean, uh, the, the air vents in leather. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. It's pretty cool. Carbon fiber door handles, all kinds of stuff. And then you can go above and beyond this kind of stuff and get into uh, what's called the Zonderwunsch program, which is special wishes, which mm -hmm. is quite literally anything you want to do to the car, they can figure out a way to do it. I believe you're a little familiar I'm with that. I'm sli <laughs> slightly familiar with that. <laughs> so I love these, uh, these colors here on the wall, the paint the sample colors. These mats are awesome. Oh, yeah. So these you can actually pull off the wall and actually go and hold it underneath the light, see how the light hits the different... Uh, surfaces differently, you know, all the different angle, and then it's got your paint code and stuff on the back. So when you find that one that you know it's the one, you got your paint code and you're ready to go. Those are cool. Pretty neat colors down there. I love, I love how they, the way that you know steps in the process for the machining. So I'm big into mechanical stuff. So I was, uh, uh, you know, built race cars for a while, and then then did some machine tool work as well. And I just I love seeing the processes, you know, the different orders of operations and stuff. It's pretty cool. That's kind of neat to see. It's yeah, it's a, a original lock. billet. Cool. All right. Well, we'll head on downstairs. See a few other of our little Easter eggs. Try to get some wide shots too. I like the last walk. I understand. You, I understand you're building a pretty cool garage yourself. I did. 
I did. Is it finished now? It's finished, but um, because of because of other issues, but I'm blaming it on the fact that I'm getting this new car. We're redoing all the floors in the okay. house and in the garage. Oh, cool. So when this, I want this to be the first car to roll in. There you go. So awesome. when I leave today, uh, the car gets on the trailer and it meets me back on Monday. Perfect. So yeah, it should be cool. So that one's oh. next. See, you told me there wasn't any available. There's one right there. <laughs> It's another little kind of neat thing. This is actually a map of the driving facility. So you can see the outer handling circuit, all the different modules and stuff. And we're here. Yeah, we're kind of in the building right about here, looking out that direction. That is awesome. The turntable, it doesn't move, right? It's just no, like... the turntable is a polished concrete, that big disc you saw close into us. We use that for our demonstration laps. So the normal circuit goes around just the other side of that pillar and then makes a left and continues on, right? Closed circuit. When we do our demonstration laps, we use these access roads as part of the circuit. So we actually keep making the right. We come down this full speed, a little over 90 miles an hour at the brake zone, right about here. Hard on the brakes, down to first gear, and then we actually drift the turntable and go back down the other access road and rejoin the circuit. Instructors only. Yeah, as coaches driving, taking people for rides. Yeah. Awful lot of fun, though. I can imagine. It's the only job I've ever had where I said, how much is that car? And you want me to do what with it? <laughs> okay, for no, science, I'm going to do it. No problem. Another kind of little peek into our Porsche Classic restoration shop there. We'll see some more as we kind of make our way down. I like these stairs. Very rubbery. Without being too grippy. That's great. Colors of Porsche. Yep, we're doing the colors of Porsche event. We're going to head in there in just one second. I just want to show you, give you the kind of full tour. So normally when you'd be picking up a car, most, a lot of people will drive their cars away. They'll drive their cars back home. So we actually have a special uh, parking spot. So this area right over here, when you, come, when you get done with your drive experience or when you're ready to head out, your car would be parked there and you get it, pick it up with this great kind of cool, cool picture not everybody wow. gets to take. This was actually an NVD from yesterday. Uh, I believe they're going to be heading out today. Are we allowed to take pictures of this? Sure. I think it's awesome. Bespoke decal set. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That was he had that he had that commissioned. By whom? From, from Porsche. Porsche. That is gr awesome color. Everything. Great wheels. All of that. Yeah, get a good shot of that. Deviated stitching and everything. I, I like this car. Damn. Cool. All right. Well, we can head on back inside. Well, and yeah, yes, yeah, so we won't actually put it up here. We'll have it down well, we in our bay. Yeah. Oh yeah. If they uh, want to do that, yeah, we can ridiculous. do that. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. Gold wheels. I mean, come on. Yeah, we can. Yeah, sure. I'm sure we. I can. I can, I'm sure we could do that. Is this insane or what? That was cool. Here we go. Hey, tell me. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Welcome to Heritage Gallery. What's that? Welcome to Heritage Gallery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So here we've got an exhibit we're doing of all the different colors of Porsche, but a lot of them are colors that you may have seen in a poster. Well, you've probably gotten to see a lot more colors yeah. than, than the average person out yeah, in the wild. Yeah, but yeah, some pretty neat cars. You may recognize that Ruby Star car. It's uh, one of uh, Mr. Keen's projects there. Yes, he was going to come and visit us here. He was going to drive the car for the video, but he's traveling or whatever. Oh. Look at Mr. Keen. I'm going to text him right now. <laughs> Just amazing. You should tell him AJ says hi. I'm sure, I'll tell him AJ I'm sure he doesn't remember me, but we've, we've met a couple of times. We have quite a he's, few friends in common. He's an okay common. driver, right? He, he does okay. He does all I've right. Given, I've given him some tips. Yeah. Some <laughs> There's some neat, neat cars in here. Unbelievable. I think this is probably the most commonly mis, uh, misnamed color. Everybody thinks that it is Guards Red. It's actually Fire Red on that car. It's all swirled out. It's just the tiniest bit more orange, I think, than the regular guards red. Oh, there she is. Just for you, Capo 
Dude, this thing is, come on, this thing, what are these worth, man, like 30 grand, 40 grand? Um, a, nine, a regular 968, probably going for, last time I was looking there for a nice one, yeah, somewhere in the mid-20s, maybe, yeah. low to mid-20s. You meant, what is, like, you wouldn't pay 35,000 for this car, like top notch, like this, this thing is amazing. Oh man. All the cars in here, I'm taking a picture of a 968. <laughs> I'm not knocking it. It's a great color too, man. I love the Tahoe blue. It's one of those colors that just kind of gets deeper as you look into it. That's the car right there. It's driven too, you can see oh, it's yeah. all worn out. It's true, very true. A couple rare cars. Now this is one of my favorite colors because as you walk around, it completely changes shade. So it's pretty dark from this angle. If you come around to this side, all of a sudden you see a lot lighter, a lot, a lot more blue come up in the paint. That is a great color. It's Viola Metallic. We've got the GT2 RS as well and the Ice Cream Metallic. Another That's gorgeous cool. color. A little bit iridescent to that, uh, that shade. I love just the amount of carbon that's used in these cars is just awesome. Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah, they did they did quite a few, uh, you checked quite a few boxes on this car. So it's another kind of, one of the original construction models for our facility here. So you can kind of really see that shot that I was talking about the Avengers, how, it, how you get that angle. But each one of the, uh, each one of the Porsche Experience Centers has a different, very unique architecture to the, uh, to the building. They're all pretty neat. So, weird question. Why is the Porsche going that way, not this way? Because when the airplanes are landing, which is generally when people are looking at the ground, they're coming in from this direction and they land on the airport. We're standing where the airport is. Okay. So when you read it from that way. It makes more sense because yeah. when you're taking off, okay. Yep. Okay, there was thought put behind it. I like it. <laughs> all amazing books back there. Look at that. A lot of, a lot of cool history here. Whose is this? I don't remember whose suit that was, actually. Candy? It's awesome. We'll head on down to our classics gallery. There's a few more cars to see down here. Not everybody gets to go on this half of the tour, so it's Thank pretty you. cool. Oh, that's so... That's... He has that one. He's got one of these, but not that color. This car actually has proper race history, true race heritage. Actually won the 24 Hours of Daytona. Just crazy, that's his car. A lot of people never realized that Porsche was an engine manufacturer on any open wheel cars, but the Porsche, Porsche powered March chassis Indy car, part at the time. So a lot of people are a little bit surprised by. Yeah, that's wild. Well, it's very few, yeah. What year is this? This is uh, early 80s, I believe it's like 84 maybe, somewhere in that, in that era. Can you imagine driving this thing? It's got to be just hairs on fire kind of thing. Oh, yeah. So I never gotten anything quite this power to rate, weight ratio, but I did a little bit of driving in some prototypes. And it's with the, the ridiculously small amount of, of uh, suspension travel that you have, it's just you feel every grain of sand on the road. It is, yeah, it is, it is a, a rough ride, if you will. But the aero, learning to drive an aero car is a, an exciting uh, experience. A long time ago. I and somebody else might or might not have taken a two-seater version of this around the Boston Commons. Around the, I might have allegedly somewhere. Well, allegedly, there. The theoretically. Yeah. The police was like, uh -uh. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> There's one of my favorite examples of Porsche Classic and what they do for restoration. Well, that thing's straight as an arrow. 
And the amount of detail, even though it's in the interior, the amount of detail that goes into it is just phenomenal. I'm sure I can trust you. If you want to step over, you can look a little closer. Looks like it rolled off the showroom floor yesterday, you know? Here's a Larry Polish stuff. I would love to do that. That leather inside is incredible. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Obviously, a, you know, no, no motorsport-oriented manufacturer will be complete without a good trophy case. Of course. So some of the awards that uh, Porsche has won over the last several years. Always been very impressed by the best luxury brand. That's that's a pretty you know pretty hard fought award. Winning it multiple years in a row is I think pretty impressive. You just blast it out, buddy. I'm hoping you're not you're looking at that the whole time. Making me nervous. Another <laughs> kind of neat little go kart. Yeah, these are okay. Not too bad. I just found it be a little snug, you know. I was gonna say it feels smaller than it looks on. Oh yeah, they look huge on TV. They killed the detail on one of these cars. That is neat. Do you think this is just like normal pods, like just they're painted with the colors? More than, more than likely would be my guess. Alright, we'll sneak out the back here. A little display of our uh, Porsche Classic, the number of available parts there. Oh, yeah, that's. I should go home with that. There you go. Everybody needs that on a 964. Yeah, if you need anything, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> 964. Oh, look at that bag. How beautiful. I love this, too. This, these kind of, every one of these. Oh, that's so cool. Look at this. Those are factory steering wheels, huh? Yep. There was only one car that ever had something besides the Crest or the Porsche. And it was for a Saudi prince or Saudi king. And then Porsche had to melt them after they did it because they realized they lost somebody that put oh. something besides the Crest. So it's sitting in Stuttgart, actually. Really? At the museum there. And they're like, yeah, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I love how the 959 is obviously before the 964. You know, aren't they the same? Like they took the technology out of the 959 for the 964. This is awesome. Well, there's one more neat little uh, Easter egg I like to show people. I don't take everybody down here. But, thank you, thank um, you. Some of the technology that goes in. So this, also in this building, we do all the tech training for dealerships across the country. So especially the specialty cars, stuff like the 918, and the Carrera GT, the GT3, GT2. So they come and do a lot of training and they end up with some pre pretty neat little displays. A lot of people don't get to see this deep into one of those cars, but this is actually the front corner of the, of the actual monocoque chassis of a 918. So you can actually see how the carbon's bonded together in all the different places, how the suspension is assembled and, and uh, works. So the strut is here mm -hmm. on all of them? Yep. So pushrod suspension allows us to have a significantly higher amount of travel on the shock and the spring than what you get out of the wheel itself because you have different moment arms here. So you can actually translate this into a longer movement on the shock and get more adjustability. Is that why, like, on my 964, I have, you know, race suspension and I have the canisters? Is that mm -hmm. the increase? Well, this? so that like, canister is actually a nitrogen canister. So that keeps the oil within your shock from cavitating, makes the shock more efficient. It's a little bit different concept uh, or process there. This is really just about the mechanical movement itself. Got it. Oh, this is wild. It's pretty neat, isn't it? Yeah, that's cool. Oh, sorry, Jordan. Uh, 
I always like to see how all the hardware is actually bonded into the chassis itself and all that. That's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. uh, Quite literally all of it. Oh, yeah, you are, kid. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to stay away from you. All right. It's my job to worry. Well, let's head on upstairs, one, back up one level. All these chargers. Cool. And we've got an entire wall of chargers for the, the uh, electric cars and the e-hybrids down here and also on B1. So one last thing before we get into the official delivery lounge, if you would for me, if you would slide that little white block over to the left, that actually makes it official. Can you get this on this side? Can I slide it? Well, I'm waiting for you to, you good? You good. Michael, you good? I'm good. Delivery in yeah. progress. <laughs> 